Oh, it's happening. Is it happening? It's happening. It's green. It says it's green. Let's see if it's working. Time to stream some games. <laughs> yes, we're live! All right. Plays. That's fine. Hello, everyone. Good morning slash evening slash afternoon slash tomorrow. Um, thanks everyone for coming. Please refresh if you can't see the stream. That makes no sense to me saying that. If you can't <laughs> see it. Um, <laughs> uh, I am Vida. I am the community manager on Control and other Remedy stuff at Remedy. I am here with two wonderful people from the Control dev team. Sadly, uh, Brooke couldn't make it, so I roped in another member of the narrative team at the very last second. Ooh. This is Clay. I'm Clay. And I'm this is Brooke. Brooke. Yeah, Clay is our, one of our writers uh, on Control, and I'm, I'm Paul Arith. I'm uh, the lead designer on Control. Yes. And uh, what are we doing today? This evening? We're going to play video games. We are going to play some video games. <laughs> you know what? You should have brought the glasses. It's too late now. Oh, no. Until next time. No, you won't be allowed on another. And a tiny guitar. Dang it. <laughs> um, all right. So what we're going to be doing is we are going to be playing a little bit of free roam area in one of the sectors of control of the oldest house. Wow, I'm so professional, I keep losing my words. Um, and then we'll be also talking about gameplay and narrative, and it's very distracting to see myself in the thingy. Don't the look screen. at yourself. Don't look at the screen. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and uh, we will also be taking questions from the chat, so if you have questions about development, working on control, about gameplay, about story, we will do our best to answer them. But please, like, don't be mad if we don't answer all of them because there's some stuff that we can't talk about. There is some stuff that we are holding back specifically about the story because the story is mystery. God, and some questions is. might upset the reindeer in the studio. Yeah, because because we're in, in Finland and we have reindeer in the studio. That's right. Reindeer, we have foxes, we have a Santa Claus in the basement. Too. Okay. The basement? You yeah. weren't supposed to talk about. Okay. Edit that part out. We can edit this yeah, video, this right? Live, yeah, it's not live. Don't worry. Okay, Don't perfect. worry. Yeah, yeah. We'll fix it in post. Excellent. Look at magic. Um. So, can we talk about again what you guys do? Like, Paul, your title is lead designer. What does that mean? It means I basically uh, am responsible for figuring out what kind of gameplay we have in this game, and making sure it all comes together in a very cohesive and fun way, and that it's tuned and balanced well. So you can have the most fun possible. Okay. And um, Clay, what do you do? I am a writer. Okay. Yes, just writer. Uh, <laughs> I work with Sam Lake to do the dialogue, the story, make the whole game, you know, remedy worthy. Who's, who's <laughs> Sam Lake? Sam Lake's this tall guy who is very handsome and wears three piece suits, and you might know him for pretty much also being Max Payne. Right. That's yeah. right. He's very clever. Okay, and just in case there's any people here who have no idea what control is, what is control? Good question. Control is a. I have to go. <laughs> <laughs> no, please, please. Well, I can't do this by myself. It's a video game, right? It's a video game, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. We know that. Yeah, okay. It was an action adventure game. You get to play as Jesse Faden. Okay, who's Jesse Faden? Who isn't Jesse Faden? I have uh, to go. <laughs> It's going to be a, a reoccurring theme. Jessie Faden is a woman of mystery, and she's also currently recently made the director of the Federal Bureau of Control. Here to kind of uncover a lot about herself and this place that she's inherited. I feel like there's a lot of stuff here that's like a lot of information for me to process. So, like, mm -hmm. what is the Federal Bureau of Control? Why am I? Why should I? Why should I care about this? You know, we actually have the intro thing, and that might, oh, yeah, cover, we do. That might cover some of the stuff, and we could probably talk over it as well. Yeah, we could. Okay. Talk Let me, over uh... the video game? Shall we play it's a video up, game? It's up to you. No, 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 we can totally play a video game. Are you sure? Yeah, maybe. Let me put my laptop down and go to the other computer and hit some different buttons. Uh oh Oh, yeah. Can I talk over my writing? That should work. Do it. Hit it. See. Do not. Back. But hit the button. 
wait a little bit until it loads. It should work. It worked when we tested it this afternoon. <laughs> Technical difficulties. <laughs> it's never once happened here before. No, it's 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 Ever. totally fine. Never. It's completely fine. I don't see the loading loading thing either, but it'll be fine once it does load. Everything's gonna be fine. Everything's gonna be completely fine. How are you guys doing? Oh, Pretty there good. it goes. There it goes. Please, game, why would you do this to me? <laughs> it's all part of the show. Still loading. Still loading. Fun fact, the word loading is actually attributed to the first game writer ever. It's actually the most popular word in game writing history. Used in every single game ever made. Really? No. <laughs> what? That's true. I think we might be getting hacked. Uh, I don't think so. Well, then I'm out of ideas. See. You don't know if you're being hacked. I mean, how do you know? I don't know. Um, there we go! You did I it. did it! Alright, do we want to restart this? <laughs> no, I, I think know. we're it's fine. A, it's a kind of work. <laughs> I think we're okay. Yes, so in this demo we're going to show you Jesse's transforming service weapon. We'll show you the different forms it transforms into, um, different abilities and how we use these in different ways, in different places. Yeah, so this is the demo that we have been showing behind closed doors pretty much, but we built it to have it work in progress, and you can't see the work in progress because we are on the screen. Let me just... Whoop! There we go. Um... Yeah, so we built this place, well, we didn't build this place, but we repurposed this place for demo purposes for like a free roam kind of experience where you can have fun and explore and look for secrets. And uh, this is, so the oldest house is broken up into different sectors, right? And this sector is the research sector, and this area is... Central Research! research. Ba, 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 ba. That was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> And we are playing on PC right now. We are playing on Yeah. So, so Clay, who is this? Who is this gentleman? This handsome gentleman is Dr. Darling. He is the head of research. And as you can see, he has a lot of fun kind of educational videos sprinkled throughout his sector where he shows you, uh, you know, introductions to various paranatural topics which the Bureau investigates and delves into in their research. Those are his fun assistants. They are pressing buttons. Sometimes you gotta press buttons. Doing soldering. Like an omelet. Taking readings. <laughs> I love this. Can you do like a like a developer's commentary of like what is going <laughs> on? Calling coffee screen? cups. Calling coffee cups. Yeah, that's this is actually a you know a coffee cup that took years to make. I think so. That's a little behind the scenes. Back, right, you know. Been told to turn up the audio for the game. Cup. I'm gonna turn it up a tiny little bit so you can still hear us. Careful. There we go. That should should be okay. Uh, please shout at me in the chat if it's too loud. You gonna break the TV screen? You? I don't think you can do break that. the TV There's screen. Just to do some redecorating. Cause... My couch now. <laughs> this is my couch. Is oh, that's. Excuse me, sir. Would you like to sit on a comfortable? Let me help him. Ouch. Ouch, meat person. <laughs> person meat. Ouch. Please. Could we have an overview of the sound of the game? Someone asks in the chat. An overview of the sound? Yeah. I don't understand the question, but... Um... Uh, like how the sound works. And also the game sound. People are saying that the game sound is low. The game sound is low for a reason. It's because... You need to hear us talking over it. Uh, you need to. <laughs> you have to. I'm going to turn it up when we are not talking, which should be in a little bit. It's right. It's really low. Well, so all right. All right. All right. There we go. There you go. Right, all right. 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 Is the musical score going to be ambient or fast paced action type music? Oh, hey. Well, guess what? You know what? We, I think we actually have both. Yeah, I think we have both. We actually have a procedural uh, music system, which uh, changes the music speed depending on what is happening. So while we're exploring, it's a little bit more ambient and slower paced, mysterious. And then as we get into combat, uh, it actually speeds up, changes pace depending on what you're doing. 
Oh, yeah? Hold on, I just have to show uh, the amazing destructions we have in this game. So this is one couch that I can pick up, right? But you know what? You can also break it down by shooting it into multiple different pieces and pick up different parts of it. <laughs> And we that are is just super cool. That's amazing. We are going to have actually next week on the twenty third. We're going to do a stream with our VFX guys who yes. made all of this happen. So like Elmany mm -hmm. and Jim, who have also worked on Quantum Break and are responsible for some of the absolutely crazy <laughs> stuff that has happened visually in Quantum Break, are going to sit down with me and play a little bit and like wreck stuff and talk about why Sofa breaks into individual feathers that explode and stuff like that. Um, do powers have a cooldown or oh, limit, Paul? They do have a cooldown. Um, you'll notice in the lower left, uh, there's a white bar. Uh, the white bar is currently my ability bar. So different abilities have different costs, and some abilities cost a little bit more. Um, and that bar recharges uh, as I'm not using my ability. Great. Um, what was I gonna... Oh, people are impressed by the physics. The physics are good. Again, this is a work in progress, so if there's frame rate drops, and there might be, uh, please, please don't come for us. We are working on it. Uh, this demo is from, I think, March, so the game looks better now. It looks pretty good this way, but it looks... It, oh, you could have grabbed that. I could have. <laughs> choice not to. I made a conscious yeah. choice. And as Damn. the new director, Jesse will have to pay for repairing all this damage she does. <laughs> so, I mean, she has to allocate the budget and the resources, the man hours to fixing everything. So, this is also, you know, something that's going to be coming back to bite her later on. So, when we yeah. say that the director's job is never done and that once you finish the main campaign, there's still going to be stuff to do, what we basically mean is there's going to be like an accounting, yeah, yeah, like number crunching portion of the game where you just fill out paperwork. Okay. That's my favorite part. Please, please don't. To the two people watching, please don't take this seriously. I'm also Just quite a sarcastic person. So yeah, Clay's very sarcastic. Yeah, don't trust me. You're not adding additional features. <laughs> <laughs> additional paperwork features. I have it all designed out, don't worry. Uh, can we use the disruptible environment to our advantage? Like, for example, can we break walls to drop ceilings? You can do certain things uh, with the environment. I don't know that we have that situation in this game, um, but you can you can grab pieces of it uh, and use that. So like I mentioned, like the chairs that break apart, you can pick up different pieces of the chairs. Uh, we also have the ability to increase the size of objects that you can pick up. At the beginning, you can pick up smaller pieces like these uh, chunks of concrete. And then later on, you'll be able to pick up larger things like vending machines and forklifts. Are you going to go downstairs and pick up the vending machine in the cafeteria? Spoilers? Are we in spoiler territory already? No, I don't think so. <laughs> All right. Which I vending machine? Yellow or... Yellow. What is that one even? Vend. Can yeah. I ask the chat? Hey, think, chat, which vending machine? Which vending machine do you want us to pick up? What is the other one vend? I don't know. Is it a locker? Is it like a... It's Don't great how that. we don't know this when we all work on this <laughs> game. Like it's like, what is box. this? <laughs> an old-timey icebox. I don't like the way the security camera's looking at me. Okay, people say people are saying evil yellow one. Yeah, so, yellow one. Okay, okay, icebox. You You've made a moral okay. judgment. Oh, we can look inside. Oh, what? Solve the riddle. Come on. Rotate. Yeah. Rotate. rotate. No, rotate. No, ro ah. <laughs> Hold on, let me set it on this table. <laughs> right now, open the door. No. Oh. Come on, maybe if I... There oh, we go. There we go. Okay, what's inside? Oh, okay, this is the mystery. The mystery. The wheelless house is full of mysteries, as you can see. Will there be some <laughs> mysteries? This is my vending machine. Sandwiches, maybe? Like, you know, those like old kind of... I can place it right here. Sandwiches, but... Uh, what are the controls like at present? How do how do how do they feel? Like I can speak. I, I'm going to start because I read the questions. So I have that privilege. Like I can speak for myself, and I can speak from what I heard from like people in playtest saying and press saying and like other people who we had to play the game. The controls so far feel very intuitive. Like the the main thing is like hold and release. Right? Am I saying that right, Paul? You want to take over? Sure. Yeah. So. 
So one of the intents uh, behind the design of controls is that we make sure that we have really snappy and um, empowering feeling controls. So when you want to do something, we want to make sure that you can do it right when you want to do it. Um, so we have pretty quick and snappy controls. Um, another thing is that you, you gain powers over time, and I wanted to make sure that you don't feel overwhelmed at the beginning of the game. Yeah. So uh, one of the things... Sir, you dropped this. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so we wanted to make sure that we don't just give you a whole bunch of controls all at the same time, but that you kind of learn them over time. Um, some of the feedback that we got at uh, PAX was a lot of really positive feedback saying, you know, wow, these controls feel great, they feel really intuitive, they feel really snappy and easy to learn. That's exactly what we were hoping for. Nice. Um, so, although you are hiding behind cover, this isn't a cover shooter, and no. we encourage people to like jump into the fray because there's no automatic health regen, and you have to... Yeah, that white stuff that enemies drop, though, that like gives you health back and it Absolutely. gives you other perks and benefits and things. Um, play, quick question. Mm -hmm. uh, where did the inspiration come from while making this game? There is one thing that we quote specifically. Yeah, like, I mean, Annihilation, Annihilation, Jeff Vandermeer, uh, the whole Southern Reach trilogy in general is full of very kind of this new weird genre that explores a lot of the. First of all, like the kind of mundane aspects of a bureaucracy that investigates these pretty much forces that you cannot understand. Like, you know, they try their dangest, but really... <laughs> <Whole> language. <laughs> <laughs> they try their gosh dangest, but I mean, it's just like at some level, some of these things cannot be understood and they're doing their best to grapple with them here, but like, you're going to see a lot of stuff here that is hard to explain in, in a very cool, interesting and weird way. Um, Twin Peaks is also a very big personal creation for me. Yeah. yeah. That's a good... I feel like... Oh, there's some floaty people in here as well. Floaty people. Yeah. They're napping. They're, 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 they're going to be okay. Yeah, because yeah, like, I'm I'm going to switch to that narrative <laughs> chat. <just> kind <laughs> of. <laughs> just, that's, that's me on a plane. Now that's what they're called now. Skynaps. Skynaps. <laughs> if you would like to take part in Skynaps, purchase Control. <laughs> Go to controlgame.com. Controlgame.com. Skynaps, out now. Um, I wanted to ask actually about narrative and leave Paul to, to, to can't mess think around. of a mess around. Thank you. Love I was like, so. what is that? What is the PG thirteen word for mess around? Um, ne mess around. Uh, and like <laughs> the thing is, like we say that new weird is an inspiration, and we say that um, uh, annihilation is an inspiration, but like a lot of people, that's pretty inaccessible to a lot of people who don't yeah. know what those things are. Mm -hmm. So like, can you explain it a little bit more? And also, Paul, do you want to go upstairs and find the, one of the central research sightseeing things? I would love to. All right. Yeah, so a lot of, um, you know, genres like science fiction, fantasy, or they usually in some way have a resolution or have a vehicle to really explain the concepts explored in those franchises. Um, yeah. And New Weird is kind of more about the experience. And like, you know, it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. So, you know, it'd be like Star Wars where you don't really get an explanation as to really why anyone is jumping around or having doors made of light. It's just kind of more about them trying to grapple with these concepts, but to a degree they're so alien to the human mind that it is just beyond access. Yeah. And, you know, so it's more about just finding their way through that, kind of like a human way of navigating those bizarre circumstances or situations, as opposed to, you know, like, in science fiction where you always get a very clear cut, here's how this thing works exactly, at pretty much the top of most sci-fi franchises. My favorite. If you haven't read the Southern Reach trilogy, go, oh, down, where did it it go? go out and read it. Yeah, the Southern Reach trilogy, like... It's a good read. The movie's pretty good, too, but I always like books. I... The movie, like, it, the Annihilation, the Netflix movie, is a good movie because it's in the spirit of the book, for me yeah. personally. It's not like a direct adaptation. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. Um, oh, gosh. Ooh, there's a bunch of questions. Uh, yeah, thank you for that explanation. That was really good. Yeah, it was a little round of it. Uh, well, it was, I got there in the end, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we, but basically, like, the bottom line is we don't want to explain everything. We don't want to be like, so this is how the sausage gets made. We want to 
leave stuff open to interpretation? Exactly. Right? There's open-ended questions. You're buying this game is still going to be a mystery, and it's going to be kind of up to the audiences to piece together these theories, kind of like the Bureau does. Like, you know, there's these hypotheses on how these things work, but at the end of the day, they're not 100% positive. So you'll find breadcrumbs in the game that allow players to kind of make up their own theories on how all these things interconnect and behave. Well, I feel like I'm patting my own back when I say that's really cool, but that's really cool. It is really cool. It is really cool. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we get excited about the things we work on. Yeah. 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 That's why I come here every morning. Yeah. The finish morning. Um, so American night, as they call it. American night. Where are we now? Oh, I love this. This was this. We put that in the gameplay trailer, and I love that that was at the end of the gameplay trailer. By the way, yeah. Control Remedy on YouTube has all the videos. Pick it up again. Pick it up again, Paul. <laughs> Pick it up. I'm gonna shine it on the walls. Mm -hmm. What about lamps? Okay. Oh, the lamps. Yeah, lamps when left out. abilities are a little bit too powerful. That little the book cart right itself, and I feel like it deserves a little round of applause. Like, yeah, it was tumbling, and then I just kind of was like, you know what? I'm on the bookshelf. You what I am. A very good bookshelf. A bookshelf. Oh. Uh, so where are we now? <laughs> what is this place, Clay? This is, uh, I believe, Dr. Allen's office. Yeah. Yeah, so this is where one of those people who's trying their darndest to figure out all these mysteries is doing just that. And as you can see, he's made a mess of it. He's a messy worker. He thrives in chaos. And this is his attempts to understand some very classified material that I will not go into. But what is his zodiac? Um, I've asked you this before. I feel like I've asked you this, and then you made it up, and then you were like, he's a cancer, and I was like, mm. and then you said, I don't know anything about astrology. I think he's more of a Capricorn, because I don't know what that one is, but it sounds the neatest. Capricorn is like a fun version of a unicorn. But Capra? Isn't Cap Capricorn's like the goat? No, anyway. A goat, you know, like, so like a unicorn, but a goat. A goat with a horn. Um, and then, because you said that there's going to be stuff. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I started talking about astrology. I apologize. Um, <laughs> no, I just can't talk. <laughs> goat horns. I have to watch this video now. <laughs> Do a birth chart for every single major NPC in the game. <laughs> I mean, I could. No. I just haven't. But if that's a good use of my time, we'll do it right now. Um, so, right, uh, Paul, you picked up a document. Yeah. Can you look, can we look at where, what it is? I believe so. So let's go to our collectibles. In here, we can actually read some of the lore that you'll find in the world. We'll have different narrative items that you can explore and pick up, and they'll flesh out um, some of the backstory of what's really going on. Here in and this is like an altered item and for those guys of you guys of what for those who have seen the e3 demo um if you remember jesse found a gentleman sitting in front of a fridge and this document actually refers to that item very panicked gentleman yes sitting in front of a very menacing fridge yes yes right. and that fridge is actually now it's like an actual side mission in the game oh, yeah. about solving the fridge, right? Yes. You can talk about that a little bit, but don't spoil it. Okay. No spoilers. Spoilers, but no, you just, uh, you know, like everything in the Bureau, Jesse will encounter these situations that are, you know, ongoing as she's, you know, going about her own journey and she can stop and, you know, find a way to solve them as best she can. I mean, the fridge is a weird one. No two ways about it. It's going to be a strange one for folks, but it's a very cool, interesting side mission. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are going to like it. I've seen it. Though. It's really neat. Um, and uh, there was fridge. a... Sorry? Sorry, weird fridge. I'm weird fridge. I'm yeah. so excited I get to talk about weird fridges. Can you, pick up, can you pick up the water cooler? Cool. Well, there was... Oh, well, <laughs> no, <laughs> apparently not. Right. In, in, in progress. Okay. Progress. Um, we only have two... <laughs> 30 minutes to finish playing this, but don't don't go to oh, the left. We'll okay. do that um, in another stream. We have That's to right. leave some secrets. Right. Uh, the mess of this place. Show you the there are janitorial staff that's gonna have to fix all this. Yes. And you know what? This wasn't me. Your news was Jesse's the new boss here, and you can tell she's gonna be super popular. It's because of the hiss. You know, yeah. if the hiss wasn't here, we wouldn't have this. Guess we can always play that. 
Don't blame it on the sunshine, don't blame it on the moonlight, blame it on the hiss. Um, so, this so, um, Wendy of Mars in the chat is asking, will there be environmental puzzles we will need to use our abilities to solve and try, not necessarily, bleh, bleh, I can speak, oh. and try, oh, oh whoa! <laughs> right into the face. Oh, no. I was so interested in hearing this question that I was not doing very well at video gaming. Well, Next. there we are. We're, gonna, we're back. We're, we're back. We're gonna hang out in this corner a little bit yeah. while it loads and Jesse respawns. <laughs> That's right. Um, yeah. So there was a question, Clay, about. Uh, ooh, I need to a bit. About like, will there be environmental puzzles where we will need to use our abilities? There we go. We're back. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, we'll have um, puzzles that require Jesse to definitely think outside the box with how to. Uh, yeah, solve those things. And um, yeah, yeah. But so we've we've got some fun content for uh, secret finders, people so, who like secrets. So how did someone so young become the director of a secret government organization? Asks Cliff. Yeah, like, will that be addressed in the story, or are we just in the hot boss dimension? I don't know what that means. <laughs> well, there's a lot of dimensions. Whatever that is, I'm excited for it. <laughs> No, it's uh, it's part of the story, and it is addressed as to how Jesse becomes the director. Um, yeah, um, I'm not sure if you want to give that away here. I don't uh, think it's so. It's a fun part of the story. Yeah, and you'll see. Um, I don't know what the hot boss dimension is. <laughs> Sounds like a pretty crazy place to be, but well, I don't think we're in so. that one here. There are a lot of dimensions here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's three that. Um, Plus the hospital. There was another question. Okay, if we can answer it. Uh, can we talk Just about that. UI at all? Like custom customizing the UI, uh, hard customizing the subtitles, colorblind mode. Is it too early to talk about that? How's uh, that going? That's like still very much in progress, right? Yeah, I don't think we have the details complete. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Um, I don't think we have the details completely um, fleshed out for the specifics yet, but I think we are going to try to have as much customization as we can. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. We want to make the game accessible to a large number of players, and we want the most amount of people to be able to play it. And I, like, there is a bunch of us here who like to, like, invert the controls and, like, really tweak the... Yeah. Week that I don't I don't know how to how to like talk about this, but I know that like the first thing I do when I open a game is go to the options and like change a bunch of stuff so that it's easier for me to play. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that we will support full control customization. Um, yeah, something that we were very uh, adamant about giving as much customization as as we can. I think we we're a rather small team here, and we're working as hard as we can to as much as we can into the game yeah that's of course our challenge but we do want to try to get as, as much customization as we can in. that is the camera's automatic thingy fine yeah. these are good questions by the way you guys. yeah these are super super good questions keep them coming that's why we are here um so there was a question like way earlier uh paul about um, like the eureka moment in designing the gameplay. Did you mm. do you have did you have Ooh. something like that? Yeah, yeah, that's a tough one because with games like this where you have a lot of different abilities and a lot of different enemy types, um, you kind of it's really hard to get everything to come in all at the same time. So you get an enemy here and then a weapon here, but it, it's not quite balanced. And then you get a couple of abilities, but you, know, you haven't kind of figured out how best they can be used against enemies. Um, there's something that we always try to take a, advantage of, which is called emergent design, which is where you try to design like you know, 70 to 80 percent of the game. And then you want to allow a certain amount uh, for the fun happenstances the kind of happy accidents that that uh, come out while you're while you're kind of working on the game, and so some of it was um, we had planned for, and some of it was hey, what would be great is if we could use this ability to do X, Y, or Z, like mm -hmm. the healing orb. Um, we have this. I don't know if we can. Yep. Yeah, let's can let's do it. Show it, but I'll I'll try to. 
go, but the, we have this enemy called the, the Healing Orb, which is very concentrated hiss. Called his cluster. His cluster. There you go. That's the official name. <laughs> if you want Design to use names, the you want to use and narrative them. names, you know. <laughs> we speak a common language, but it's not always the same. The thing which heals you is yeah, what we do. The <laughs> thing that heals. Um, this thing to appear. Um, but it's a it's a the big red uh, spooky sphere that you'll see. <laughs> And this enemy uh, serves to kind of heal enemies, and so whenever that's around, you usually want to target that first because it's uh, buffing the enemies and making them a lot harder. Um, but once we got the compel ability, which allows you to compel enemies, and it's um, called seize now. Seize, that's right. The chain. Yeah, it's called <laughs> seize ability, which you can also demonstrate if yeah. some enemies spawn around here. Seize is a better word. Yes. Yeah. Pretty much my job is opening a thesaurus. Yeah, your job is going like, yeah. no, this is what we're calling this thing now. And then everyone going like, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I go on streams to correct people. So right now I can, <laughs> I can press X to seize this enemy. Now he's my best friend. But now he's going to go and attack these other enemies uh, since he's on my side, which is cool because he draws their attention. Um, and so the healing orb... Uh, when I use C's on the healing orb, it'll actually heal me instead since I pulled it over to my side. And that was kind of one of the happy coincidences of taking something that we had kind of planned for, but then making it even better. Um, so in terms of like the aha moment, um, that was one of them where it just made sense, you know, it just made perfect sense to be able to seize this enemy that's buffing and the other enemies and now it's going to buff you. But in the whole game, a lot of it was just lots of all tuning and tweaking to make all of these differences come together. And they're really nice. I don't. Uh, what was like a? Can you pick up? Oh. Can you pick up bodies? By the way. Yeah. The animation. Oh, okay. <laughs> and also throw them. So, when you convert enemies to your side, like when you seize them, is that for a certain time only? Is there, is there a timer? Is there like a certain number of enemies that you can seize? How does, how does that work? I know that like it's still... Yeah, that's yeah, a go really on. good question. So, so the way we, we balance and account for that, I'll show you an example when I seize this enemy. Um, so, his health bar gets refilled um, up totally, but then it will start draining slowly over time. So they can only be out for for a certain amount of time. His oh, wait. Oh, here. <laughs> but in the... In the <laughs> there he goes. There he goes. So, so they'll <laughs> last for a certain amount of time, but what's cool about this is you can actually upgrade that ability yep. um, uh, so that they'll last longer in combat. Yeah. Uh, so, let's yeah, there's a question about DLC. Um, concerning DLC, we are currently 100% focused on shipping the main game, so we're not really ready to talk about DLC yet, but uh, the DLC. If the mic is cutting out, I cannot help that. I can move uh -oh. it a little bit. Can you move the mic a little bit towards us, Craig? Yeah, we sure it, can. Megan? I think it's okay. Did that help? Did that, did that help? We can turn uh, no, we can't. Um, uh, yeah, okay, so you've... He's got, he's got a health bar now. Yeah. Now you can see it slowly will drain over time, and the more damage they take, the faster it will drain. And again, you can upgrade that in your ability trees so that they last way longer. Very good questions. <laughs> can Jesse get different hats, Clay? Different hats? Yeah, different hats. She Who's can. asking this question? Yes, <laughs> actually, she can. She can get different outfits. Yeah, she can get different outfits. I think yeah. one. I think some of them have two hats. If I recall correctly. I think some of them. At least, yeah. I think at least one of them has a hat, yes. as far as I remember. Yeah. So it's more different outfits than like she's not going to get a sombrero. Yeah. No. Yeah, we have different yeah. outfits, and they they can include hats, but we don't have individual yeah. separate hats. Yeah, yes. including but not limited to hats. <laughs> this is the most important. Warning: May contain <laughs> hats. May contain. Yes. Um, oh, 
oh, can you discuss how materials and crafting will work in the game? We can talk about a little bit about mods and stuff, but just a tiny little bit. There will be uh, a stream in May where we can go further into this, but once you get somewhere where you're not being shot at, Paul, you can have a look at the menu, because we did pick, pick some stuff up. Let me start again. Let me drop this. I mean, it's just keep. I think if you go into the bathroom, they won't follow you. Oh. <laughs> oh, that is the women's is bathroom. Okay. They are nothing if not polite. <laughs> <laughs> they will not follow you into a restroom. Well, luckily we also pause the game when you bring up the menus. Um, yeah, do we want to talk about customization a little bit? A tiny bit, yeah. Okay. So yeah, here we have the different weapon forms. Um, again, we have one service weapon, but you can uh, change and customize its different forms. Um, and each one works a little bit differently. Uh, and then along with these forms, you can add and customize different mods, which change how the, the weapon behaves. Yeah. Um, so for example, this one will increase my ammo regeneration by 40%, which is actually good. This one will increase my weapon damage, and this one will increase my rate of fire. So by combining different combinations of these, um, we can kind of tune and customize how your weapon forms behave. And there's also character mods, and the character mods change kind of more about how your player behaves. Mm -hmm. uh, so this will increase my health, this one increases my stamina, regeneration speed, so I can use my abilities more frequently, and uh, this one increases my essence health restoration. So as I'm picking up the little white... Glowy things? I don't know what they are. Yeah. Little white glowies. Uh, <laughs> shapes. <laughs> as, as I damage enemies, they'll drop these little white glowies, and then as I get close, I will pick those up and those will heal me. So it provides this risk-reward system for players. I can do damage to enemies, but I won't heal until I, I run up and pick up uh, the energy that they've dropped. So it's, uh, it's a nice... Yeah. yeah. Keeps you up yeah. close and personal with the yeah. enemies. So. <laughs> I want that. Did that sort of answer the question? I can't remember what the I question was. I think that answered the question. Yeah, the question was. Crafting. Oh. Crafting, yeah, crafting oh, and right. mods. That's pretty much what we yeah. said. Yeah, um, so I guess to answer that a little bit clearer, um, certain enemies will drop certain types of crafting materials, and yeah. you can combine those in different ways to create different items and upgrades. Yeah. So that encourages you to go out into different sectors because different sectors might have a different enemy type that has a higher chance of dropping one of the resources. Um, so you really want to get out there and get that too. So this is the research sector, right? So clay. Fact. Fact. <laughs> True. Fact. True this story. is the research sector. <laughs> Can you give me some more facts about the research sector, Clay? The research sector was founded in, I don't know, actually. Um, that exists in my head somewhere, but I've locked that part away. Uh, the research sector, yeah, it's kind of like we said with the, you know, talking about Dr. Darling, the uh, head of research. It's where they really kind of get into the nitty gritty of examining these kind of strange otherworldly materials and objects and forces, trying to figure out kind of what makes them tick and also how they can implement them into their bureau. Because, you know, they're not just trying to you know, gather data on these things, they're learning about how they can actually incorporate it into their processes, how to, you know, use it to contain and control other otherworldly forces. Yeah. Real quick, here's an example of one of the crafting <laughs> resources right here that I can pick up. Intrusive pattern. Oh, can we go downstairs? Can we check this out? Yes. Yeah, but yeah. I, I gotta warn you guys, it's gonna get weird. So when I talk about, yeah, they're trying to learn how to use these paranatural objects and forces to contain other similar forces, this is kind of what we're talking about. Elevator. Special. What and is that? We're mean? in oh, another no. bathroom. <laughs> I love, I love, like this level design is impeccable. That the elevator leads straight down into the bathroom. That's what I want in my. Architecture. I mean, it is a shifting place. It may not have oh, originally. True. Yeah, you know, this is just something that happened. 
But um, so this is a threshold. This is kind of where the oldest house, which is this place that bleeds into other dimensions, this is like one of those. <laughs> Please break the, can you break the toilet? This is one of those spaces where those dimensions leak in and kind of their physical properties and laws bleed in with our own. And you kind of see the result in this like very <laughs> disgusting, otherworldly, rapidly growing mold that the Bureau has to find ways to contain because otherwise it will spread and keep spreading. And this is kind of what they're in this oldest okay. house for as well, is to oh, no. keep these things contained in that bay. Now we have uh, oh, no. some folks who are quite so lucky down here. These guys are a little bit tough. I, I <laughs> forgot that they're tougher, and also when I first played this, I didn't know that they were there. So I was like, oh, that's a pretty desk. Can I pick <laughs> this up and read this? And then I turned around, <laughs> and there was five of them behind <laughs> me. <laughs> Um, and so it's not a safe place to work, obviously. I mean, this used to be a very regular, boring, let's say, HR department, possibly. And now, look what did it like? It's less see, boring. Yeah, the people who have, <laughs> were working here, they, you know, they didn't exactly expect this, did they? HR department. How is the spookiest HR department? Let me see if I can log into this computer. Hack the emails. This is what hacking is. This is that, that is what yeah. hacking is, yeah. So Mr. Robot was a clear influence as well, and this is kind of what we took out of that show was the hacking. Because yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. that's how I think Mr. Robot does it. I usually hack by throwing the computer up against the wall. Yeah. I <gasps> love <laughs> how these things would just explode open. Pressurized. Yeah. Oh, the lighting is beautiful. Thank you so much. Our lighting mm -hmm, yeah. department will be very happy to hear that because they work incredibly hard and they care so much about lighting mm -hmm. things well. They do. So. Yeah, they do. Yeah, like the kind of scorching on the mold here where they've tried to burn back the mold to keep it from spreading. You can see the lighting there is just fantastic. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah, they've been trying to contain this by the only way they know how, which is honestly just, you know, kind of control burns. Kill them with fire. It hasn't Kill been working, fire. but they're kind of best option right now. Yeah, there's some environmental storytelling that I think yours will be a thing that helps explain some of this stuff in a bit more depth. Um... There was a question if there is, I think I'm going to let Clay take this. There was a question if there is a melee version of the service weapon. Melee version, as yeah. in a melee ability yeah. with the service weapon? I think, like they mean, I think they mean a sword. Oh, um, not currently, no. But I mean, the oldest, the service weapon has had many forms throughout its... Mm. It's history. Mm -hmm. So this is just kind of the latest iteration of a object that has gone through many different forms. So who's to stay and hold in the past? That was really so ambiguous. Like, yeah, but, but like from a from a like a narrative. Oh, look at it, zoom. There it is. From a narrative perspective, yes. I mean, this has they the bureau theorizes that this weapon has been found throughout history, like in you know weapons of great importance in, you know, real life and as well as mythology. So Excalibur, the Mjolnir, these kind of weapons that demand yeah. worthiness in their person, as well as weapons that kind of can change form depending on what the kind of collective unconscious thinks of when they think of the word weapon at that time. Uh, these kind of forces gravitate towards people's opinions and their beliefs, and they're affected by them as well. So, you know, because we live in this modern age where guns are the epitome of a weapon, this is kind of the form it's taken. Yeah, so it's only, from a gameplay point of view, it's only ever going to be a gun in the, in the game, but from a narrative point of view, it has been different things. It has depending. been different things, yeah. and it will be different. So you'll notice now my, my beyond Jesse. You'll notice now my health is uh, recharging at a really good rate of speed. As I take damage, you'll see my health recharging. That's because I've compelled the uh, his cluster. You've seized it. 
Thank you. <laughs> you were so close. <laughs> and now I can go Super Saiyan since it's now buffing me, so I can go for nuts for donuts. Super Saiyan is a game term as well? Yeah, Super Saiyan is... It is, is an official is industry term. Yeah. yeah. Kind of yeah. like, oh, why not? Here is the same, though. Gold. Not yet. Yeah. One of the outfits. Oh! I was going to answer this one in the chat, but I think, Clay, you can answer it. Or, oh, like, I will leave it to you if you want to answer it, or if you want to run out of the room and go, oh, I have to go. No, next. <laughs> next Pass. question. Uh, the question Pass. is, is any of this happening in real life, or is it a simulation, or spoilers? I almost, want question. To, I almost want to answer this one just because I... Yeah, uh, these people have really good questions. Uh, who are these people? Uh, but, um, yeah, who's asking this? Uh, so the oldest house is a place. I wouldn't reveal where too much. Things are bizarre and dimensions bleed in, like I said. And there's a lot of theories from the bureau about kind of what things, kind of how these things are truly coming into our world, and a lot of that does kind of work with, with some theories about, you know, is it real? Right. And, you know, it's just theories, and that's the thing with, again, the Bureau is that none of the theories are necessarily right or wrong. They are, at the end of the day, just theories. These are forces that are very difficult to understand. So you will see people with that point of view, but, you know, you might have a guy right next to him on the next desk over who thinks that person's an idiot. And right. that all this is very real, and that, you know, if it wasn't real, it's having imaginations, and it wouldn't be this terrible. This impactful. So basically, your answer is maybe. I'm saying in a very long maybe, yeah. Okay. As someone who you know plays around with these ideas, I like to well, hang on. There. I love that the, the question is the question is is it real? Is it fake? Is it like a dream? And you're like maybe. Here's a <laughs> maybe three to paragraph explanation on maybe. <laughs> yeah. But I mean that's what they're trying to figure out too, kind of. Yeah. They don't have the answers. How do I? Um, so... <laughs> but this is your job, Clay. <laughs> well, it's my job, job is to write these people, so I, if they don't know, then I can't know. That's how writing works, right? It's like method acting. Yeah, I become um, Jesse. This is a very important question. Also, Paul, can you go upstairs, or like downstairs, I forget where it is, to the acoustics research lab? Yes. I think it's like upstairs. There are... There are oh, that's, oh. That question is... There are actually two in this area. So, um, so, Clay, are there going to be people to interact with in the game? Yes. I mean, there's, yeah, there's plenty of characters. We haven't included them in this space just because we don't want to give away too much of the story in yeah. the demo, but we have uh, characters that, you know, provide additional story as well as a lot of context for this world and, you know, what they're trying to accomplish here. So, uh, you know, none of this will be left two in the dark, you'll have people helping you kind of figure out things along the way. And they're all very fun and weird people in classic Rimby fashion. Oh. Yeah, we've got some great characters. Oh yeah. You're welcome. That doesn't, that is a narrative item that doesn't work in the demo. It's just like, doesn't need animation. But the <laughs> acoustics research lab does play music. It's gonna get real weird. So the Bureau obviously subjects <laughs> people to a lot of very strange things, voluntarily, of course. They, they sign a liability waiver, but all those things. Oh. I'm like wrecking everything. Yeah, accidentally, I feel like she's very purposeful. So we've named some characters. We've talked about Pope. We've talked about a little bit about Marshall. We've talked about Trench. Obviously, oh, there it is again. There it is again. That's fine. There we go. We're back. <laughs> <laughs> we're back. It is a. It is a. Uh, <laughs> it's a timed. Exclusive. It's a timed. Ex it's a timed <laughs> demo, and we have to restart it every time because it's on a timer, and That's I right. don't know how to go into the thing. That's fine. Uh, what was that? What was I saying? Oh yeah, so we've uh, named some characters. We've named Pope. We've named Marshall. We've named Trench, obviously. So Clay, I know we shouldn't play favorites, oh. but who is your favorite out of them? You haven't named my favorite. 
I have not na- out of the, out of the ones that I've named. Well, out of the ones you've named. I know I haven't named your favorite, but I we can't think talk about them yet. Darling is my favorite, just because yeah, he was a lot of fun to write. <laughs> Um, and that I mean, gets pretty weird too. This is very bizarre. Like <laughs> Jesse is my favorite at the end of the day, but Darling is just a lot of fun. <laughs> he's gonna Why? be because he is just so bizarre. He's I mean I mean he is also my favorite. <laughs> yeah, he's the guy who's like pretty much the most like saying elbow deep in these forces, and it's yeah. made him a little interesting yeah yeah that's a good (laughs) that's a good way to to say that he's very committed to his job and it's had some fun effects on it yeah he's just really interesting um (laughs) that's a very good question how from he's shake that's a good name (laughs) yes cheese shake how many different concrete slab textures are on the disc (laughs) that's you counted them yeah a lot. A lot? <laughs> Many. Yeah, we have. We even have different uh, concrete types per sector. But when you go into different areas, concrete actually has slightly different looks to it. That's true. Are we going to look at walls now? Please, please, let's not look at walls. Let's look at walls. Oh, do the, do the smiley have, face thing. All walls from here out. Do the smiley Sorry, face Laura. thing. Oh, is that where you spell upon your words in it? No, you just... Yeah, it turned out. Yeah, that's pretty good. Oh wait, I totally didn't switch oh, to the no, game. That's no. fine. There okay. we go. You have to do another well, one now. Okay, there it is. There's, you can you can definitely there's room for improvement, so maybe try that again. Yeah, let's try yeah, that again somewhere else. Yeah. Okay. It's it's hard. Okay. Hold on. There's one right, right there. Here. Yeah, right there. Right here. Yeah. Incorporate the stud into. Okay. Yeah. Maybe the other eye. Some of your masterwork. Oh. Okay. This is going to be it's a, less, really. a less... That's a neutral smile. face. This is neutral face. It's easier than doing smiley faces. It's really hard to do this on the controller. <laughs> That's really bad. All right. You a mouse? There we go. Mouse would be much easier. Here we go. You're one of those people. I'm just saying for smiley faces. <laughs> My mouse. You should very much enjoy it. Um, oh, about the concrete slab textures, one of my favorite things is I was talking to Unsi, who is one of our longest standing employees, and what are you doing? He will turn off in five minutes. Oh no! <laughs> unless we press a button. Please press a button and don't, don't. I don't know which button to like, press. Okay. Press. Okay, is it a neutral one? Right? That one? There we go. Did it. You did it. Um, yeah, so I was talking to Ansi, who is like one of our longest standing employees. He's worked on Max Payne 1, he's worked on all of our games, and he's like, he knows everything. You ask him something and he knows, and if he doesn't know, he will figure it out. He is a genius. And, yes, uh, so I do. Where? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, this gun shoots recover, by the way. And we were looking at, like, the. He was showing me. I have no idea what, <laughs> what he was showing me, but he was like, uh. I don't, I don't like this brutalism. It's all too gray. We have to make it different. And then he uploaded a texture of someone's eye. Cause like we scanned the actors, right? And then there was like a picture of Courtney's eye. And then he put it instead of the concrete slab texture so that all of the walls were like eyes, 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 terrifying. eyes. That is terrifying. Um, eyes everywhere. Yeah. Get behind that. Can you smack down the floating bodies that don't spawn into enemies? Uh, I think you can do damage to them and remove them. But I don't know if we have explicit smacking down of yeah, maybe <laughs> said, fine said bodies. Down. This isn't WWE. No. What would Jesse's wrestler name be, Clay? Go. Ooh. Red Thunder. Yeah, I was going to say like Red Terror or yeah. something. <laughs> I've never been here. Can you go in here? We can. We have a leather what? jacket on. It's your game. Play it how you want to play it. Yeah. I mean, that is true. Is That's what we are trying to do. Did, uh, play it like you want to play it. 
feel like you um, like to play video games. And like, are there, are there areas inaccessible at the beginning of the game that we'll have to backtrack to later, or is it more of a linear experience? Um, we have. So yes and no, and partially yes. <laughs> so we have areas that you can't get to yet that you'll need to return to once you get certain abilities or certain keys or certain other things that happen yep. uh, within the events of the world. Um, but there, the, some of the missions are also linear enough so that you can just complete a mission and that it, it, it shouldn't be super confusing. Yeah. Um, so we have kind of a, a healthy mix of a certain amount of linearity with a certain amount of open worldness that uh, explore and find new places. Well, that you can. open endedness, not really open worldness. Like it's not that huge. It's not a God of War. It's not a right. Far Cry. It's not Far Cry. No. Some nice interconnectedness to the level spaces. Yeah. Uh, I think. Someone says achievement uh, achievement achieved. Make smiley face to wall. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that would be an interesting achievement that to try to figure good. out how to track. And uh, can <laughs> Jesse f like levitate indefinitely? Uh, no, there is a limited amount of levitationiness. Uh, you can upgrade that to allow you to levitate for longer. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I'm noticing that like when you levitate, your ability. Thingy, as it is officially called. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> the bar. The bar. The bar. Thank you. I, I forgot. I forgot the name. I forgot the word. It doesn't move. Correct. It yeah. does not. It does not pull from your ability bar when you use levitation. So we have a separate limiter for levitation. Uh, okay. That was actually an interesting design problem to solve. Was how do you have one bar for all of your abilities without it being overwhelming or feeling like you always don't have enough ability bar? And so levitation was one of the ones we actually separated from the ability bar um, so that you can kind of have your own gauge for it and you don't have to feel like you're pulling away from your abilities. Which is great because flying is super fun in this game. Yeah. It's so good. Like, once you get it in the game, I do not want to stop flying. Yeah. A battle royale here. We need to compel some more people. I need some more helpers. Like, you should say battle royale. Oh. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's true. It, it means yeah. something different now. Control Apex Knights. <laughs> Battle Royale confirmed in control. No, it's yeah. not. No, no, please, <laughs> please. Lord, we do not have, for the record, we do not have a Battle Royale mode for control. <laughs> right, there is a question. Have we shown the Mirror Maze? Next stream, the next stream will be... April 23rd, if I'm right, and I think I'm right. And that's when we'll be showing the mirror maze. We've shown Dr. Darling's office, we've shown one of the acoustic research labs, and we've shown the active threshold. But so we've seen uh, stuff. We've seen a lot of stuff. Um, there's things and stuff. Things and stuff. Okay. Up and things. You are going to be my best friend. Um, another question, is the entire game clay inside this building or are there areas in the outside world? The entire game takes place in the oldest house, but that does not limit you to just what you see here that much. That's a good answer. I'm doing thumbs up. This place is ever. Um, there is a question that keeps repeating. It's, uh, will there be an FOV slider? Do we know? Um, well, I think we're still working on I it. I think right? we're still working on that. We we want to make sure that if we give you an FOV slider, that we do it the right way and that it doesn't cause issues or people be sick. <laughs> That's true, yeah. Um, yeah. And third person games, it, it can be a bit tricky, in, but we're, we're working on it. There's a bunch of people who get seasick from third person. Oh no! Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Need more health. Uh, from third person video games, like I get I get seasick, I have trouble with motion sickness a lot. Oh, oh wasted. It so, is a real live demo. It is a real live demo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Players are not professionals. <laughs> the players are not professionals. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, I've only been playing this game for two years straight. <laughs> um so yeah, I get I get motion sick a lot and I keep complaining. To the dev team, or I kept complaining to the dev team, like, "Hey, I'm getting sick. I can't play this." And they, and then they iterated on it, and then they fixed it, and it's 
okay now, I think. I haven't I haven't gotten sick in the last however many months, mm. so it's okay for me, but like Paul said, we are working on it. Yep. Uh this button. Uh all right. Oh, we are out of time. Hang on. Oh. Let's see if we have any, any last questions. Any last questions? Any short questions? Lingering thoughts. Any lingering thoughts? Any heartfelt goodbyes? <laughs> I'm, I'm sad. Uh, yeah, I've turned off the game so that now it is just us. Oh, okay. So no one. This must be cool. Well, yeah. I I play this game a lot, <laughs> and I still have fun playing it. That's a really good sign. Yeah. Yeah, because you got to play it every day, right? Yeah. Pretty much. Um, is there a specific reason behind over-the-shoulder view instead of a directly behind Jesse view? Pretty good question. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Um, we we iterated on that quite a bit. We actually went back and forth between the two. Um, yeah. And at one point, we had... Um, we just kind of, I think the most part uh, was that most people really liked having uh, most of your FOV, you know, kind of empty in the center of the screen yeah. so that you can uh, see what object you're carrying and it doesn't block uh, enemies uh, as much as possible. And so we ended up putting the, the, your player character a little bit off to the side because it gives you a little bit more field of view on enemies. Um, we do have a button that allows you to switch back and forth so you can actually toggle which side the camera's on. I um, didn't know that. Yeah. And I accidentally pressed the button and the whole thing went bruh and I was like, what is going on? Oh no, <laughs> oh the accessibility. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's really good. That's really, really good. Especially yeah. if you're like, I don't know. I always, when I picture things, I always see them on the left side, but I know it's, it's different for some people and it's easier for some people to play if the character's on the right side of the yeah. screen. So it's good that that is included. Absolutely. And it really just comes down to being able to see as much that's going on with combat as possible. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. No, I think <laughs> someone says, someone says, uh, switch shoulders is really important. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah. My idea, then. That was your idea? <laughs> <laughs> Stop taking credit for stuff you haven't done. <laughs> it was like my one chance to. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> let's see. Um, oh yeah. Someone says sleep, sh a sleepy sleep there. I can, I can read this name. Who's someone? Read their name. Sleepy who's someone. who's the someone? Sleepy Somnus says, Sleepy The Black Somnus. Pyramid is my favorite character. Okay. Oh, okay. Did you make the Black Pyramid play? In the sense... See, no. now, you, now you're afraid to take credit. <laughs> well, I would say this is more Sam Lake's pyramid than my pyramid, but I have helped shape it into, into a pyramid. pyramid it is today. <laughs> Should we tell them where it really came from? And geometry? <laughs> what? A geometry textbook? Oh my my triangle beard. Oh right. I was like, what are you what are you saying? Zoom what are you in. Saying? You have to zoom in. Enhance. <laughs> I'm not gonna get up and go to the camera and do that. Enhance. <laughs> Get the most awkward zoom. Hold sure. on, wait. Wait while we zoom in. I should be able to yell it and then it just does it on Are you serious? You want me to zoom into your beard and then end the stream? Yeah. <laughs> and make a worse sound. Is that it? Is that, that our... is it. That is our stream. I I I would not zoom. Uh, if the chat wants me to do a, like a <laughs> whoop, 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 zoom in on Paul's beard, that would oh, be God. super awkward. It's, but I could do, do it. That. Let's vote. <laughs> Let's vote. Call five one three to cast your. A long distance to Finland. Yeah. <laughs> Call the government. <laughs> Which government? Finnish. Call the Finnish. They just There's had a new an election. one. There was an election. Yeah. Read up, everybody. Local politics, I guess foreign politics. So Okay, beard zoom approved. I am <laughs> I am unfortunately going to do this because Twitch is making me do it, and then we will end the stream. But um first of all, let me thank you everyone yes. who was here and who asked questions. All of your questions were amazing. I had a lot of fun even though I wasn't playing the game. I hope it was fun for you guys as well. I had all the fun. You did. You took all the fun for yourself. Paul Hogg, the controller. But... I can't help it. Once I start playing, it's just... I don't want to give anyone else I just control. don't get to play it. No, and it thank control. you, Clay. Yeah, no. <laughs> now at the end of the stream. <laughs> unplug it first. Thank you, Clay, for jumping in at the last minute. For Brooke, who is sick. Uh, hopefully, we'll get Brooke, nice our narrative designer, on one of the other streams in the future. If not, we'll just have Clay. I think he is a worthy substitute. 
Get well soon, Brooke. Get well soon, Brooke. Nice to meet you guys, though. I am not Brooke. <laughs> and uh, um, our social channels, so you can find Control's channels at Control Remedy on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. And you can find Remedy at Remedy Games also on all, at all of these places, on or at. Uh, you can find me on Twitter as Vida is online. And you can find Pet Paul on Twitter as Bacon... Sandwich. Bacon underscore sandwich. Yeah. With a, without the D, just sandwich. Sandwich. Bacon sandwich. All right. Uh, so thank you once again very much for coming. Next stream will be... April 23rd, so that is next week. Same bat time, same bat channel, so twitch.tv Remedy Games. There is an event somewhere that you can set a reminder for, but if you follow us... Oh, Jesus. Oh, what is that music? That didn't sound like music. What's that motorcycle? What's that motorcycle? It's a motorcycle going back. I think it's the Black Pyramid. <laughs> it's the Black Pyramid. I think we're all going to die. The Black Pyramid's once, dropping a mixtape. Once, once this ends, we're all going to be dead. Or other. God, what was I saying? Plugs. Uh... Oh, yes. April 23rd, next stream. Uh, same bat time, same bat channel. I will have two different wonderful people from the dev team here with me. I will have Jim and Elmerie from the VFX team, and they will talk about blowing stuff up and how we made all the environments so reactive and why when you pick up a sofa, it explodes into 10,000 billion feathers mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Um... Okay, all right. I'm gonna do the beard zoom and then I'm gonna awkwardly end the stream. Beard zoom. I'm excited for this one. This is the best and worst way to possibly end the stream. This is the worst thing I have ever done. You're welcome, internet. This is the most I can zoom. And there it is. Hands. Hands. And in hearts. All right. Bye, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Goodbye, everybody. Thank Enjoy you. Enjoy your day. And nights, and mornings, and, and tomorrows. Nights. Days and nights. Days and nights.